Hello again here, it's Jimmy at O'Reilly's Motor Mechanics. So I'm making a video here today for a couple of questions that I'm getting a lot of calls for recently. Um, the problem is with these YouTube videos is what I'm getting now is I'm getting, I'm trying to work uh, and I'm getting maybe 15 calls per day asking for uh, help uh, guiding them through uh, certain questions. How do I test this? How do I look at this? Uh, can you help me walk, walk me through... Um, my vehicle i'm trying to clean the dpf i'm trying to follow your video but there's questions i want to ask so i'm going to make one video here now uh which is a question i get a calls for a, an awful lot and that's how do i know which dpf pressure pipe to put the cleaning fluid into so i'm going to show you a couple of different ways how you can test that so i've got one of my own vans here so this is a couple of the things that you're going to need is a diagnostic machine this one is an autel mk906 bt and then just over here next to it i've got a digital manometer just there this one is from autool but you can get these anywhere uh online for like 20 30 quid so we're going to talk about dpf pressure sensors and how you can test which sensor is before the dpf and which one is after and how you can tell the difference so most vehicles with a DPF have got a differential pressure for the DPF that looks something like this. Now the, this one is in this location, obviously some cars are in different locations. And the problem some people have is these tubes run down and then you lose track of where they're going. You can't see which one goes before the DPF or which one goes after it. So what you want to do is disconnect these pipes. Now these are already a little bit loose. So it's not usually that easy, but these are loose. So now you know which one is before the DPF, which one is after, which one would you put cleaning fluid into if you're gonna flush out your DPF. So first way I'm gonna show you is by using the manometer here and we're gonna start the engine up and then we can plug the manometer into both tubes and you should be able to see which one is before the DPF and which one is after going by the pressure. So we're inside the van here, just gonna start it up and I'm gonna use this pedal depressor. It's a laser pedal depressor, 3237. Just because I'm on my own and I haven't got someone to hold the accelerator for me. So I'm going to put that onto the accelerator there. We'll put the brake on the accelerator. Hold that up to about 2000 RPM. Now we're going to connect up the manometer to there. Now we've got that connected up. You can see there we've got 3 millibars pressure so we'll disconnect that pressure drops off now we we'll connect it to this one now you can see that's 0 0.7 so we'll just take that off so you can see there this one was 0 0.7 with the engine running and this one was 3 millibars with the engine on acceleration so which one is before the dpf and which one is after could you tell of course it's this one is before the dpf so this one is a higher pressure so that means that's before the dpf lower pressure is after the dpf so this one before the dpf is where you'd put your, your cleaning fluid into so now we're going to run the same test again but we're going to do it connected up to the um diagnostic machine here now again we're going to pull out the hole we're going to look at the DPF pressure there, which is this one. And then we're going to pull the holes out. So that's the holes disconnected. And when you put the holes back on, the pressure will come up again. So I'm not sure if you could hear what I was saying there. It's a bit loud with the engine running, but basically we accelerated the engine up. And then we disconnect each holes until we see the differential pressure drop off. Once you see the differential pressure drop off and you disconnect that holes, you know it's that, that holes that's, that's uh, reading the pressure. And that's the one that you're going to put the cleaning fluid in. When you connect it back up, you should see the, the readings come back on again. So it's a pretty simple way of just testing it like that. Um, just uh, It's a very common question you get asked, well I get asked. Um, because people want to know uh, where to where to put the, the cleaning fluid in. Now, of course, if you're not sure on these or you can't find the sensor, some of these sensors are very difficult to find. 
uh, on some vehicles. So your other option is to go in through something like this, the oxygen sensor um, or exhaust gas temperature sensor, which are further down. Uh, any of those sort of sort of access points you can get into the DPF. Now the thing is with something like this, this will go in to the uh, catalytic converter first or the pre-cat. Um, so it doesn't hit the DPF directly straight away. The benefits of going in through a sensor is it goes directly straight to the DPF. Um, but there are benefits to both. So doing it that way, you can clean the pre-cat as well first and the DPF. But if you want to just clean the DPF, the, the best direct line is through the uh, differential pressure sensor. So I hope uh, that answers that question. Um, yeah, reason, well, uh, it's, it's good to make the videos anyway. You make a video, um, it, don't, it doesn't answer that question just for one person who's given me a telephone call, but it answers that question for as many people who want to see the video. Um, so the uh, only thing I can say is uh, for people... I'm getting I'm getting a lot of calls, um, which is very hard to deal with. Um, it's hard to deal with the amount of calls I'm I'm getting already just for uh, work inquiries. But um, I well, I don't really have time to actually talk people through, you know, each repair on the phone. I you know there's there's literally thousands of people that that want want help like that, uh, and I literally can't help everybody on the phone. It just takes too long of a process to do that. Um, but Speaking on the phone as well is quite difficult to uh, to talk about and talk people through stuff when I'm I'm trying to talk blind with my eyes closed, telling them what to do. Um, so this one here answers that question. If there's any other videos, I think that you'd like, you know, either leave a comment and if you get an answer on the comments, other people will see your answer too, and they will get their answer from the answer on your comment. Uh, so by commenting, you're helping other people get an answer as well as yours not just trying to give someone a phone call or a text or an email um, the comment section or requesting a video is the best way to do it so i hope that answers all the questions and i'll see you on one of the next videos